This is very important, especially being a sensitive empath or a highly sensitive person when you're dating, when you're you're looking for a partner or you're not looking for a partner, whatever the situation is for you. Anyway, this is regarding romantic relationships that this is the trap that a narcissistic person will use against you when they want you into, into their trap, into their life, um, to be their supply, to be tolerating disrespect and hurt and all sorts of other um, negative toxic things and energies from them is that they will show you this fantasy person that doesn't exist and you have to remember to not fall in love with a fantasy and if they want their fantasy they can keep their fantasy your job is to leave i believe that there is such a thing as a perfect person for you too, like there is for everyone. We can have many soulmates in a lifetime, but uh, we, we can have only one twin flame. But that relationship can be very tumultuous, very difficult. But um, this is really a very, very, very important truth that you have to remember when you are encountering people, especially if you are going through dates with people, is to not be investing too soon emotionally or in any way in a person who will never live up to your standards they will never be enough for you because they are not the person for you they can be very toxic they can be a narcissistic person pretending to be someone else you know playing this fantasy character that really does not exist job is to only honor yourself, respect yourself, love yourself, accept yourself, you know, in every way. Um, the way you are, you know, honestly and unapologetically, freely being your authentic self, no matter what someone thinks or says about you, let people keep their opinions and thoughts to themselves. It's not your business. Your job is to be happy and thriving. And that should be your number one goal not to be looking for a romantic partner. Of course, you, you, you can have that wish within your heart and it's natural to have that, that urgency and that, that feeling, but being codependent and ending up in a toxic relationship is another thing. So you don't want that, now do you? To fall in love with a fantasy person and discover uh, real uh, years later that this person never existed and they are very toxic and destructive and they, they are hurting you, attacking you, destroying you in every way possible, maybe cheated on you behind your back, you know, talked bad things about you behind your back, just made you feel bad about yourself and about bad about your life and, and, and all of that, which has led to depression and anxiety and self-loathing and fear, shame, guilt, you know all of those negative feelings and emotions and thoughts which are not healthy they, they are definitely not healthy or good for you and you deserve a lot better you deserve normal healthy relationships okay so do not fall in love with a fantasy person who is not real you want a real authentic relationship this is a very typical narcissistic trait <clears throat> that um, the, the narcissist is looking for a fantasy person who really does not exist. They are looking for somebody so perfect that it's impossible to be a human being and make, make mistakes and have flaws of any kind, you know, to be living up to this person's expectations. Nobody can do that because we are all human. We all make mistakes sometimes, we all have flaws within us, and they are natural. They are natural traits. In a person, it's not about being a robot. We are not robots or dolls. We are people with histories, life histories, with thoughts and feelings and emotions, and especially being a sensitive empath or a highly sensitive person, even more so. This is really the dangerous and very fatal trap that you don't want to step into as a, as a sensitive empath or a highly sensitive person. 
with a toxic person, you know, if you have to deal with one, because, you know, like I said, they are looking for this fantasy person that you cannot be. You cannot be that person, and you're not supposed to be that person. You're supposed to be you. You're not supposed to be suppressing your feelings and thoughts and emotions. You're supposed to be expressing them. They are a gift within you. That that trait is what makes you you. It's it's a big part of you, and it is a talent, a gift that some people just don't have. You know. And it's your job to embrace yourself fully and truly and not let some toxic person stop you from living a full, happy life. Uh, we empaths and HSPs, we can be so critical on ourselves. We are just too hard on ourselves anyway. In a day. Uh, because we can exp express, you know, and, and feel so much in a day. And on top of that, if we have to deal with negative people, which makes it even more difficult and more pressured. So what I want to say and remind you of is that really you have to allow yourself to be you and feel what, whatever you feel, like I always say, because we can be so hard on ourselves. So if a narcissist is in your life destroying you, then... You know, your life is a living hell. It's not happy. It, it is definitely not healthy. And I also have to add that, you know, <clears throat> you have to go no contact with this toxic person, narcissistic person. You really have no choice. You have to go no contact as soon as possible, as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, which means that you will not be contact contacting this person again and you don't allow them to contact you. And of course, this is easier to do if you are just seeing this person, you know, for example, casually or you're, you're dating or you just met or you're just messaging, it's easy. Even though, of course, I don't deny that it would not hurt your feelings. Because if you have a crush on this person, for example. But again, you have to allow yourself to feel what you feel and protect yourself and go no contact. It is so sickening and so strange and so unnatural and so toxic. So destructive. How these toxic people think that they can just treat us in a bad way, hurting us, hurting our feelings, our emotions, you know, everything, destroying our lives. How do they really think that they have the right to do that to a kind, good-hearted, big-hearted person, sensitive person, empathic, just be? But of course, this explains it that they don't feel what you feel. They don't engage with you in, in any way <clears throat> to understand you or to feel how you feel, to be in your shoes. They don't do that. They are cold in this way when you are the one feeling their emotions and wanting to support them authentically. So even if it means standing alone by yourself in this situation, because that is how it usually is when a narcissist has really taken you away from your loved ones, for example, they have you under their thumb, literally, all in control. It is your job to claim that control back to yourself, your power, your energy, your health, everything back to yourself. And remember that this process can take time, but you can start immediately to do something about it if you really want to. And it's your job to take care of yourself. Nobody else can do that for you, ultimately. You are the only one really in charge. You are the CEO of your own life. So remember that and take charge and decide and take action. Claim your power back. <laughs>